All right, I'm gonna talk about setting up the newer Project 64, which has some great hacking tools, um, and setting up MZX's app Spectrum. Uh, I will set up Spectrum to work for the new Project 64 and explain how Spectrum can be useful uh, specifically for testing this new boomerang stuff. So first, I'm gonna get the latest Project 64. I'm gonna go over to Downloads, Development Versions, and believe it or not, this emulator is actively being worked on, and whenever there's a new uh, commit, a new release is posted on this page, so they're kind of frequent. I think I currently use this one, but we'll just use the latest. Grab the zip. And I'm just going to make a folder for it. Project 64D for development. Drag that stuff in. All right. So run anyway. Now, first things first, I'm going to set some settings. Uh, I like having this off um, and show advanced settings. In advanced settings, you want to enable the debugger. That's all of the debugging tools. And in defaults, you want to set default to eight megabytes so you don't have to change it every time for ROM hacks. And always use interpreter core. Apply, okay. At this point, you'd be able to open GZ or something, and it should work. And you can set up your controller plugins for your controller. I'll do that real quick. Cool. So we got input. I'm going to mute that. Now, a weird thing about this, the mute button will actually cause the game to run abnormally fast for some reason. So just bring the slider all the way down if you want to mute it. Now, that's all well and good. You're going to close the emulator. And now you will have this. So all the settings that you set in Project 64 get set in this uh, config file here. And there's one specific setting that you can't change in the uh, in the program that you have to actually put in here manually. And that setting is going to set our DRAM to be static, which is just so that Spectrum can always find where Project 64 is, basically. But let's go over to the hacking channel in the OOT Discord, where I have a pin message. So all you got to do is add this fixed RDRAM address line to the settings line here, the settings category, just paste that in. One thing I forgot to mention, and I'll edit this in, uh, in the Project 64 config file, uh, this support Project 64 thing basically counts up every time that you run the program, and the longer or the bigger this number is, the longer the nag message will be telling you to like support the project or whatever. So to get around that, you just put negative one for run count and you'll never have the problem again. Make sure that you close the emulator before trying to save the file. <laughs> so that's everything on the Project 64 side. Um, let me just start up the ROM again and show the tools, some of the basic tools you have available to you. Uh, this debug debugger menu has everything. Uh, the most useful one is going to be RamWatch. Unlike BizHawk, every address starts with 8-0, like you're used to on the practice ROM. Um, and if you get into some of the more advanced stuff, you can view the actual MIPS instructions with this window. So now that we've got this going and it's all set up for Spectrum, let's get Spectrum. Just going to preemptively make a new Spectrum folder. And I will link this in the description. It's just a cloud mining page that talks about Spectrum and some of its tools. And it's got a download link right here. Just gonna grab that. 
Cool, I don't have 7-zip on this computer. <laughs> You're gonna need that. Okay, so with 7-zip installed, can do right-click, open archive. This will give you the release, drag the contents to your Spectrum folder. Cool. So, right off the bat, the settings.json folder needs to change. Uh, you can just open this in any text editor, by the way. This is just my text editor. Um, here in the emulators, there are a whole bunch of different entries. I'm going to erase all that's in there and just use this one for um, Project 64. So I'm going to erase all the entries that are in there and just paste this new one. This should probably be 32, but it doesn't seem to matter. But uh, yeah, this way Spectrum will find Project 64D and this RAM start lines up with this that we put in the Project 64 config. So you can save that. Now the actual app is right here. It's a command line app, so you'll get the command prompt. And it automatically finds Project 64. Since we took out all the other entries, there's not even anything that has to change. So right away, uh, assuming everything worked, if you just press the Enter key, it will give you a full dump of the actor heap in its current state, which is very useful. Um, you'll see right away that we have AI and AF. That would be actor instance and actor file. Actor file is the overlay. It's like the code for the actor. And the instance is the actual actor itself and its variables. So you've got actor instance, actor file, and its actor ID. So having this cloud modding page will be very useful. We're going to look up actor. We want actor variables. can have this to the side so that you can search Pona 14. So this is the location of Apona's overlay file and the location of Apona's instance. These uh, addresses are like BizHawk, they don't have 8.0 in the front. So uh, before I get into using Spectrum for testing the boomerang stuff, just want to show that if you wanted to use uh, 1.2, which I actually don't have on this computer, but uh, you would simply type when you have Spectrum open, game OT and 2. So N0 is um, 1.0, N1 is 1.1, and 2 is 1.2. So obviously, since I have 1.0 open right now, things are going to be wrong. But if I go back to this, things will line up correctly. Now, I'm not going to get into all of the things that Spectrum can do. Uh, there's a good amount of documentation on here, and there's a help command. Um, the stuff at the bottom is probably pretty useful. You can spawn wherever you want at the coordinates you want really easily. Uh, but this is the main screen we're going to be using for testing the boomerang stuff. 